CNET fans, welcome back to our live coverage of CES 2018. I'm Dan Ackerman here with my pal Zia Marablanco and Josh Goldman to talk about the best laptops that they've uncovered at this year's show. We are going to dive right in because we have a gigantic selection here of some of the, some of the cool things that we've seen. And I'm actually going to start off with what I think is probably one of the most impressive things here. Uh, and that's something that ZMR went to go see and write about. And this is the Acer Swift 7. And uh, tell me, ZMR, what is its uh, big claim to fame? Uh, well, this is really popular because it's technically right now the world's thinnest computer. Uh, and that is a big trend with laptops, if you didn't know. Uh, mm -hmm. They really like to make them really skinny, just like supermodels. Uh, but it has a bigger screen than last year's model. Um, and with Acer, we're not used to seeing things like that. They're usually very middle of the road, very the affordable. Laptops, we do a lot of gaming laptops um, from them. So this is like a nice surprise, uh, and everyone's been really impressed with it. It's been one of the things that people just keep talking about here, especially because, if you, yeah, look at that. And last year's model had a 13-inch screen. This one has a 14-inch screen. I think it's got LTE built in as well. Right. You've got the fingerprint reader. I do feel like at this point we're shaving just like, you know, percentages of a millimeters. millimeter off. It's not really like 8.9 millimeters yeah. versus 9.9 .9 millimeters. It's not a huge difference, but no. it's nice to have sort of those bragging rights. I'm looking for lighter though also. I feel like right. this is not the, it's not the lightest laptop out there. It actually feels, here Josh, rather for a second. It feels, yeah. right, a little bit heavier than you think it would from looking at it because it's so small. Yeah, well, right. and it's also all metal. So, I mean, yeah, obviously that's going to add some weight to it, but, uh, yeah, it definitely feels solid, right? I don't know how, how it could not feel solid this thin, so. Yeah, it, no, it's a nice, now, I haven't seen it in here's person the bad yet. Part. It's going to be expensive, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it starts at $899, and uh, it has seventh generation Intel Core processors, not the latest. So that's one knock against it. Hmm. And I think the Super, I think it goes way up, too. I think yeah. I saw it $1699 for at least one of the models. Yeah. Now, we had a blackout yesterday. First time I've ever seen that. At, I've seen a lot of things at CES. We saw rain. I've seen snow one year, but I never saw a blackout before. And when you have that, you probably want really long, if you have a laptop with like really long battery life, you might be in a good position because you can survive longer than everyone else. If their laptops cop out at five hours, six hours, eight hours, what if you had a laptop that ran for 20 hours? That is the promise of this new generation of laptops with Qualcomm Snapdragon processors inside which is basically the same chip you find in a lot of mobile phones. And they say that they'll run a really long time because they're super efficient. So this is the Lenovo Mix 630. It's one of the first, uh, you know, two or three or four of, of these systems. And it's done in the Lenovo Mix, you know, tablet, you know, surface-like tablet with a keyboard that clips on and a cool kickstand uh, style. They claim 20 hours. Obviously, it's always on LTE because that's the entire point of these Snapdragon systems. It really is taking the best stuff from phones. And, and, and putting it into, into laptops. One, one thing I did like about this especially is you, you clip it out of the little kickstand thing. So you've got your tablet part right here. Oh, a tablet. We haven't seen these in a while. <laughs> there have not been a ton of standalone tablets here, but I like the, the clip-on keyboard that unlike, shall we say, some other brands, it comes with it. You don't have to buy it separately. Right. Uh, but the kickstand on it, look at that. That's like really solid. It's got a big hinge right here, right in the middle. And you just kind of slide it on. Let's see if we can do it in one in one uh, attempt magnetically it snaps right on there and then this has a magnet back here and like that so i thought that was pretty cool the one weird thing about these snapdragon systems is you know what operating system they all come with by default anybody anybody windows, windows 10, 10 s yeah I, exactly so what is what, what is windows 10 s it's that stripped down version that can only install apps from the official microsoft app store and that which means that app store is kind of a mess. It is. <laughs> you can't get Chrome. You can't get other web browsers. You can't get like real Photoshop. You can't get Spotify. You probably can't. I don't know if Spotify is in the micro. If it's if it's in the it's Microsoft not. store, then no. But the there's a I workaround. Click. You can actually upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free just by clicking a couple of buttons. For some contractual reason, they feel like they need to put Windows 10 S on all of these. But they they go nod wink. You know, just just go upgrade it later. But they can't promise that the Snapdragon processor will. Uh, support every bit of software out there. And that's, yeah. why they, that's why they restrict it. And that's the thing that concerns me with these, they, for the vendors, they, so we've got uh, that one, and there was one from HP, right, mm -hmm. that came out when, they, when Qualcomm an announced also, it yeah. in ASUS. Um, they've talked about battery life, haven't mentioned anything really about performance. Yeah. 
because it's basically a phone inside a phone you know, right. brain in, inside a laptop. And I think as we push towards people wanting more and more, the one thing people complain about still is battery life. Right. Even we're spoiled now. Eight hours, nine hours. Years ago, that was not imaginable. Now, now it's not enough. Twelve hours is great. Twenty. Once twenty becomes the norm, you know, that's it. That, that's one of the reasons why I think we see bigger 14-inch screens, 15-inch screens in these super-thin laptops because they can make the bodies wider and that's more battery. Uh, you can fill up more of the chassis with battery and, and, and that's one way they do it. Uh, but I'm super interested to see what these actually do performance-wise. Right. We, we would have to take them out of Windows 10 S mode to even test them <laughs> to install our testing apps. Uh, so so it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a little Schrodinger's cat. You can't observe it without changing it by installing uh, uh, Windows 10 Pro instead of S, and that's probably, I, I hope that's not the only Schrodinger's cat reference someone has made this week at, at CES. But Lenovo has another cool system that Josh suggested we bring here. Where, oh, there, and that's there this guy is. right here. Right. Here you go. <laughs> that's the, so this uh, is the that's X1 the X1, carbon. Is it the carbon or the yoga? See if it bends all no. the way back. No. Oh, there we go. So that means it's, it's the, the carbon. carbon. It went all the way back, it's the yoga. Uh, but you do get that 180 degrees, so you can lay it flat to so everybody can gather around and look at presentations or something. Uh, <laughs> um, but it is very thin. Um, Lenovo says it is the lightest 14-inch uh, business system. Okay. Um, so there's added that. <laughs> they added three things I thought were, were, were super interesting. Number one. Um, they have an HDR screen, right. which not a lot of laptops have. So it's the first uh, Dolby Vision mm -hmm. HDR two uh, certified. Of HDR. Yeah. Um, and when and we then, saw it, go ahead. When we saw it. We, we asked them. They had a laptop or two with an OLED screen a couple of years ago, and right. those looked awesome. We love those, uh, but uh, they didn't really get picked up anywhere. I guess maybe it's hard to get the screens. And we looked at it. It was like, is that an OLED screen? Because it was super bright. They said no. It's the it, it, it's the it's the uh, HDR that's making it look that way. So they're getting rid of the OLED and replacing it basically with the HDR screen. Right. And they also said that OLED screen was only 300 nits. Mm -hmm. The big one of the big selling points on this one and the Yoga uh, is that it's 500 nits, it's really so bright. super bright. Uh, use that out, outside even with the glossy screen and uh, shouldn't be a problem. So. And number two, they're adding everybody's favorite smart home assistant to a bunch of these systems. Right. Uh, they put in 360 degree far field mics so you can shout out Alexa commands at it from wherever you are in the room. So you're traveling and you want to turn on your lights at home, I guess? You could do that. Um. Well, I use Alexa for all kinds. I mean, I, I do the weather all the time. I do, uh, I, I do turn on my lights. I do conversions. When we write about something and we have to go, like, it's this much in dollars. Now, what is it in pounds? And I, I, I literally shout out the conversions, and I get them back from, from, from Alexa, from the Echo I have, I have in my office. Um, now, my favorite you... thing, sorry to interrupt, um, is this little yes. thing right here. Uh, it has a... Um, it, they call it what? A camera a shutter? shutter? Yeah. Think like shutter. A, they think branded shutter. the shutter. It's like a little slider that goes over So the instead webcam. of putting a sticker over your webcam, you can just switch this over and you don't have to worry about the FBI uh, looking at you while you browse YouTube. And I think that just, that's just really neat. Um, one less accessory you have to buy. Now, do you put a post-it note on your webcam or cover it in some other way? I have an informal yeah. survey going of a lot of people. Now, what do you use? Uh, I use a variety of things because I always, always have to take it off, mm -hmm. so I always have to find a new sticker to put back on it. But I just got one of those cool little CNET ones to put on my oh, computer okay. to grab on while they. While now, they, do you do that on, on, on all the computers you use? Just your main one? Um, just my main one. What's your one? threat profile? <laughs> uh, red? <laughs> <laughs> do you, Josh, do you cover your, your webcam? Yeah, I just have a little piece of masking you tape really over do? it. Okay. Yeah. I, it's so, so interesting. I just don't. I just can't be bothered. I just don't do it. I talked to some security guys. We're going to do a story in CDET Magazine in the spring about uh, kind of security for paranoia yeah. for, for paranoid yeah, yeah. people and like what should you actually do. And I really got conflicting views from different experts on whether you should do that. Some people said yes, and other people said you're not a target. Don't worry about it. Unless you're like a nuclear scientist or something, you're you're probably okay. 
and also it was pointed out that besides this camera, you've got the microphone and camera in your phone that you carry around with you all the time. Right. That's probably easier to hack into than, than a webcam on a laptop, but... Well, so maybe someday we'll see those shutters on phones and... Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> but, I, but I do like, because business laptops for a long time, you could buy models without webcams on them because they, cause for security they wanted that. So it's cool to have this. I haven't seen the physical thing built into a laptop before, but years ago some company sent me a little clip-on version, like a little elongated shutter yeah, that, you could, that you could stick on and then a little slider thing. So there you go. It's got Alexa, it's got the shutter, and it's got that uh, HDR screen that fooled me into thinking it was OLED for a second. Now one of our favorite laptops going back a couple years is the Dell XPS 13. It really kicked off that minimal bezel look where they kind of shaved down the, the, the border surrounding the screen. But it's been a little while, uh, and that design has maybe gotten a little, a little thick, a little clunky, so they actually redesigned it for this year. This is, I think, when I saw it in person, I'm like, this is one of the cooler looking laptops here. It's the new XPS 13. And you can get it in white and rose gold on the back and a few other color options. I think it's a long overdue redesign of something that was super awesome, what, three years ago when it first came out, but then yeah. it kind of got eclipsed uh, by other thinner designs. So I'm pleased to see there's not a ton of internal upgrades other than new processors but I'm super pleased to see new colors and a thinner design on that. Right, so in that Lenovo being the 14 inch, it's this, uh, uh, what I say, lightest. Mm -hmm. uh, this is supposed to be for a 13.3 inch screen. This is the smallest in the world, okay. according to Dell. So. They squeeze, right, because compared to Dell, they squeeze it down this way a bunch. Now, how do you feel, Ziamara, about the infamous nose cam? Um, I'm not a big fan. I don't know anyone <laughs> who likes to take selfies from below or who looks good besides like Rihanna. Um, it's a weird decision. I don't know. I'm not a big Cause fan. Because you, you can't put it up here. There's no room for the webcam. So a bunch of these super thin laptops, we call them the nose cam, and they're right down there. And uh, for Skype calls or whatever you're using your webcam for, it's not always a flattering look unless you want that Vincent Price sort of underlit, you know, uh, uh, Halloween look right there. Well, you uh, also, the, when you're typing, if you're typing while you're doing it, your hands are just gigantic oh, right. in the camera. So. Giant hands, you know, <laughs> gigantic hands. Uh, but every guy, every laptop that has a super thin bezel on has the same problem. I don't know yeah. what the other solution is unless you have like a clip on on the top or something or you make this top part uh, thicker. But Pretty televisions, excited. televisions have super thin bezels all around now. It took a while for laptops to catch up. I feel like you can't really, you can't really go backwards on that. Maybe they need a notch, just like the... Yes, that's right, right, right <laughs> in the middle of the screen. Imagine, imagine the outcry over that if you notched your, your Windows 10 system. Um, but I, I think that's super cool, and I like white laptops. Uh, I just think it's, everything is, is gray and silver and dark gray. Whenever somebody has a different color, yeah, it's a glass fiber. It. They used a layered glass fiber for that, oh, um, and they've treated it so it, yeah. yeah, they've treated it so it doesn't yellow. Mm -hmm. I know that was a big concern in the past. They'd have like white surfaces, oh, they would and age they'd, yeah, they'd yeah, age poorly. Yeah. So this is treated so that it doesn't HP do that. HP Spectre, the new uh, the the new one that came out uh, late last year, also is available in in white with a really nice white. Uh, right, I back think they're surface. competing uh, rose gold white laptops. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> The other new thing from Dell is this guy right here, which is the XPS 15 2-in-1. And they've had XPS 15s before, same, you know, super thin bezel here. Uh, but this is now uh, one of those guys that flips all the way around and becomes a tablet like that. Uh, but it's a big tablet. Uh, as somebody who uses a lot of tablets, would you use one like this gigantic? Um, no, I would not. <laughs> um, I guess, like, it's useful when you're watching TV like like and you I can like it the, that's like uh, the tent prop mode. it up. And I do the kiosk sometimes. I go, look at this, and oh, I right. put it down. Yeah, that's what I call the kiosk mode. I don't know what everyone else calls it. That's what I call it. Oh, once again, you have the nose camera here. But this is, this is notable for one super big reason. It's one of the first two things that we've seen with a new combo chip inside, a new Intel chip. Uh, I think they call it KB Lake G. And it's an Intel processor with an AMD GPU together on the same chip. Uh, it's like a team of rivals thing. These two companies working together, usually bitter rivals. Now they've got a combination thing that's supposed to be, you know, very efficient, uh, you know, doesn't hurt your battery life, but gives you really good discrete graphics power without having to have a separate GPU that would, I guess, presumably come from NVIDIA. Um, so this is the first one that I ever saw with this new chip. Uh, there's one other we have here that has that. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, what I like about this is that if you could, I like the larger ones for the, even though it's awkward to use as a tablet, I like it so that you can 
put it down like this yeah. on a desk, and then set up a keyboard and mouse in front of it. You've got the keyboard out oh, of your yes. way. That's elaborate. So yeah, so you just Bluetooth. You drop it on your desk and it's like a little monitor. Yeah, it's like a little monitor with an L-shaped picture. It's just like changing it into a desktop, getting the keyboard out of the way, so you, it's not uh, really far away from you if you want to use the touch screen. Like I, I'm really interested to test one of these for gaming and see what kind of you know game scores they they give out with that with that uh, AMD That's GPU speaking. in it. We haven't had a chance to do that yet, <laughs> but if you can get decent gaming performance in something super thin like this without having to pay extra for a regular full size GPU, right. That's potentially very cool. But Dell is not the only guys doing this. Did you know that? Because right next to it, kissing cousins, if you will, right here is the HP Spectre X360 15 inch. Frankly, very similar, but it actually has a cool difference. Uh, well, number one, they put the touchpad, look at this, off on the side while the Dell one is centered. I don't know which I like better. Wait, why? I, I, so you see this touchpad is off-center because it's lined up with the... Uh, the space bar? Yeah, with the space bar, and on this 15-inch, it's oh, exactly okay. in the middle. That's a good question. I never think about that until I see it. And then I go, I think I might like the middle better. I don't know, but I like having the number pad, so. Yeah, that's odd. Do you use a number pad a lot? No. I feel no. like I don't, but I like having it. I feel, yeah. I feel uncomfortable if I don't have it. Anyway, this has also got the AMD Intel uh, combo, but you can also get it, if you don't want that, just with a regular NVIDIA MX150, which right. is a pretty, right, right. pretty decent you know, uh, 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 mainstream graphics chip. Uh, so you have a bunch of options with this, which I also like. Um, instead of just having that one Intel AMD chip, you can go NVIDIA, and frankly, for casual gaming, that's perfectly fine. And I love the gold accents. I think they've yeah. just done a spectacular job. It's like chrome hinge, yeah, looks yeah. really cool, very I, modern. This Spectre X360, the 13-inch one uh, that I know Lori loves a lot, and the regular Spectre clamshell, it's not a, a, a two-in-one that I love a lot and I actually use all the time. I think they've just done a spectacular job with design, uh, end of 2017, beginning of 2018. It's, it's, I think it's tough to find sharper looking laptops than what, than what HP is doing right now. I, think, I mean, they said that they were going after MacBook Pro users. I don't know if there's any MacBook Pro users out there who would be willing to switch to Windows, but I mean, it's a really nice are. system, yeah. I mean, yeah, we always say that. Uh, this guy, and frankly, the, the non, before we had the two in one, the regular Dell XPS 15 was the other kind of MacBook Pro alike that people liked a lot, and frankly, the designs were, were very similar. We always pointed people in that direction. How much does it cost? Um, I'm going to say probably a lot, but maybe not too much. <laughs> Uh, and these guys are probably pretty similar. If you get the NVIDIA, I think it's probably more expensive in this rather, rather than the Intel AMD combo. But these things are gigantic. Uh, we've got a much smaller one right next to it. Uh, that is the Samsung, Samsung Notebook 9 Pen. Some fingerprints on there. And that is Ooh. another hybrid. Now, Samsung makes really nice laptops, too, and they've had the Notebook. We, we, we tested the Notebook 9 Pro and a couple of different ones last year. This guy combines elements from a few of them and adds some new stuff. It's a new, they haven't something, I don't think they've had something called the Notebook 9 Pen before. Now, why do you think it's called that? Because it doesn't <gasps> come with a stylus. Look at that, right up there in the front, the pop-out the pop out stylus. And that is There's actually the regular S Pen that you get with uh, Samsung phones. Uh, they're they're cross-compatible. So it's basically the same stylus you get with a, uh, with a, uh, a Note uh, phone. Uh, and they had that, didn't they have a, a tablet that was like that, a Windows tablet that you reviewed last year? Yeah, but the stylus was different. It was bigger, and okay, it didn't so have a little place to hide inside of the that, that's device. The, that's, that's what I like most, is having a place to actually put the stylus. On the, um, on the Surface uh, products of Microsoft, that you can usually magnetically attach them right. to the side but it's pretty rare you get the little, the little holster for it right there. And of course, it's a you know, hybrid flips around. I think it's super light, actually, too. Looks yeah. like it's got the uh, IR cameras for uh, Windows oh, yeah. Hello sign-ins. Now, do you do that at all? Um, just when I'm testing to make sure it works, but I don't have it on my personal. one laptop personal, at home so. that, that does the Windows Hello facial recognition login, and I just turn it on by default, and I never you know, turn it off, and frankly, it's fantastic. Yeah. I just sit there. If I'm like, not paying attention, I click on it to like, turn it on, and I turn away and talk to somebody. Then I turn back around. It's still looking for me, but as soon as I look at it, it it's actually really fast. Yeah. Uh, Face ID is really fast, too, but you, know, you can get something that's pretty much the same for Windows, and you, you've had that bef long before you had Face ID on, a, on an iPhone. So I, I actually vote for uh, facial login for Windows. I think it works great. See, someone's looking at your camera. That's right. Oh, my gosh. It's Microsoft. Or, or you can get the <laughs> fingerprint, you know, you can get the finger. I use the fingerprint reader on the MacBook Pro also. I think, uh, I think that works really well, too. 
And uh, you know, it's super fast because nobody should have their computer even at home without a password on it these days. I think we've all learned that. Yes. Uh, just like your phone needs to be locked down, your laptop needs to be locked down too. Uh, so we got one more over here on the list to look at. Oh. This is and another. Thing. This is the ASUS ZenBook 14, and ASUS always has a ton of stuff here at CES. Uh, and you thought this was the this was the coolest thing that they had. Yeah, uh, I I really like the ZenBook 14 uh, flip. It has a 360 degree hinge, just like uh, some of the rest of these. Um, but I just really like uh, ASUS's design. They have this like circular brush. They also have it in a gold, which looks really nice. Um, but it's just a solid convertible. Um, it comes with the ASUS stylus. And it's a touch screen, full size keyboard, fingerprint reader. Um, but there's nowhere to put the stylus. There's nowhere to put the stylus. But, so. well, not good for that, but I'll give it credit for something else. You see the little sticker right here. Uh, there's an NVIDIA GeForce sticker on it because you can get this with the NVIDIA MX150, which again seems to be the go-to mainstream uh, graphics card for people. And again, I've used it to play games and stuff. I think it works great. If you want to go you know, crazy, you'll get a laptop with, a, with an NVIDIA you know, 1060 or 1070. You can even get the 1080 and super thin laptops now, but those get very, very expensive for mainstream. Uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's great. Yeah, and it also has uh, the latest generation Intel mm -hmm. Core processors. You're starting to see people move into the 8th gen, uh, which actually gives you a pretty big performance bump in the couple of systems that we've, that, that we've tested with it. Yeah, I mean, these are all 8th gens, right? They, I, I they all switch they are, to 8th gen. I think gen they're almost all 8th gens. Yeah. Um, one thing we haven't seen here, since we have all these here, I didn't see a ton of big new gaming laptops here. I saw some gaming desktops no, that all, were cool. all very stylish stuff, not yeah. really. Um, we, well, there was the one gaming laptop you saw. And I guess we, I mean, oh, we could oh, talk okay. about it even though we don't have it here. We did but see the one prototype from it. It wasn't even a gaming laptop. Razer had their prototype this oh, year. Last okay. year they had the three screen laptop. Right. This year they had uh, what they call Project Linda, which is um, basically the Razer Blade Stealth, but there's a big hole where the touchpad is, and you take your Razer phone, if you're one of the people who bought the Razer phone, right. uh, which is actually supposed to be a really good phone, and you drop it in there, and that becomes your touchpad and the second screen. The laptop is basically just a dock for it. Uh, it's, it's a prototype, it'll probably never actually come out, but I thought it was kind of cool. Yep. And of course it's got all the uh, you know, multi-million color you know, Razer uh, lights inside. So people always like seeing their prototypes. Uh, I'm a little disappointed we didn't see more specific gaming stuff here, but I did see one gaming thing that was cool. NVIDIA does um, a lot of game streaming. They have a great game streaming service. I think it's called GeForce Now. Uh, and we saw them demo that. You can get, I think, a beta client on Windows and on Mac now also. Uh, where basically the games are being played in a cloud somewhere on a powerful right. system and you're just streaming it to your, whether it's a, they had the HP, um, the little uh, uh, stream I think it's called, the super cheap like $200 HP laptop that we actually like a lot for being a cheap laptop and, and uh, people were playing you know, full PC games on it and it actually looked really good. And there, I know there was another thing, uh, Lori I think wrote about it, it was, I think it's called, was it Shadow or something like that? Oh, was it all the different you, filters and stuff? No, no, it was, it was another cloud computing thing where you could, it, you basically rent a gaming system in the cloud. That's and, almost, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's, that, that's definitely the future. We tried streaming, there were a couple of companies that did that and they all went out of business, but that was years ago. Uh, now you may not have to buy a gaming laptop, you can just get one of these super cool things like the world's thinnest Acer Swift 7 and, and just get a subscription to a cloud gaming service and play games on it that way. Um, I guess that's, uh, that's our collection of cool laptops here for CES 2018. Uh, we survived the blackout, we survived the rain, and we managed to get all these cool systems here to uh, show everybody and talk about. So uh, thank you, ZMR. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And I bet we'll be back here in 365 days doing it again next year. There you have it, best laptops of 2018.